Okay, so here's one for you. <laughs> I kind of have an overall plan. I know I'm going to have solar power. I know I'm going to take a generator with me. I know I'm going to have an inverter. I know I'm going to have batteries. So, and I know I'm going to have 110 AC outlets. So I kind of was approaching those things one system at a time. And what I ran into that might help you out is I ran this MC, this metal clad cable. So it was, there's a lot of choices when you decide which cable to run. Braided cable, solid copper, uh, Romex type cable, Romex with some special coating or whatever. There's lots of choices. So we decided to go with this Romex or with this metal clad cable, which basically already has the three wires inside of it, and they're all three insulated. Anyhow, thankfully, a guy pointed out, first off, we got pointed out, hey, you didn't ground to the box, so you don't, that doesn't mean code because you didn't ground to the box. And that's a non-typical plug-in too, that's a GFCI one here. But anyways, we went back and we re-grounded to the box thinking, okay, now we really got this like it's supposed to be. And then it got pointed out, uh, this is a bus conversion into a mobile home. Anyhow, you don't, this could be controversial and can, people get all worked up over it. But the problem is that when we grounded this MC cable, anywhere that it touches the frame, like right here, it could touch that metal frame. This is grounded to the AC panel not only through that grounding lug, but also through the tabs on this plug-in. They are direct from the ground wire to those tabs. So, the way I put this in, I'd have an AC ground and a DC ground combining in the bus, and I was told that's not a good thing to have. It can cause problems with some of the electronics, your appliances, so on and so forth. So, I already have the cable all run. It was like, okay, should I go tear it back out and put in Romex? Um, it seems that the metal clad cable is still a great deal when it's in the wall, but so I decided to just isolate the cable from the grounding. So that's why I went back and I changed my metal boxes to the plastic boxes and it's isolated, so the ground, so these are not grounded anymore. The, the outlet's still grounded because the ground wire is connected to the outlet, and it is an insulated ground wire, so if anybody's thinking, yeah, but if that ground wire still touches the, it doesn't, it's completely insulated, that ground is insulated. So, the point I'm getting at here is I'm not an electrician, I'm learning and doing the best I can along the way, but I'm trying to tell you, maybe you might want to talk to an electrician or somebody more knowledgeable, because when you do shore power, you get an earth ground through your shore power. But what happens when you are not plugged into shore power and you're running off of your inverter? Where's the ground for the AC system then? And in the research that I've done for my system, that ground's going to be in the inverter. The inverter's going to be grounded, and it basically has something in there that I don't fully understand that if there's a fault in the AC system, it'll kick out like a GFCI well, I think. I'm not positive on that. And because of that, it's causing me problems on how to connect up my AC box. So what I decided to do is get my inverter and my charge controller and get that stuff here, the ones that I know I'm going to use, so that I can get the technical help that says how I hook them up and, and understand how they're grounded. So, I already talked to the people at uh, Battleborn about how this system would work and how it does ground, and the grounding does take place in the inverter controller thingy for the AC system. Well, that has an effect on the way the electrician will hook up the panel over here. So, I'm not telling anybody how to do any of this. I'm just saying, 
you might want to look into this stuff a little bit farther than you think you need to. If I would have ran a Rolnex cable, I wouldn't have had this problem at all. I could have just not grounded the outlet. No, I could have just grounded on the outlet and had that system running through. Anyways, it's something you should consider and check out. And then in the process of checking all that out, I keep getting feedback that be careful, don't run your 12 volt system wires within 12 inches of your 110 wires. So like up here, the great thing is <clears throat> this has all just been put in the 12 volt system, we just put it in temporarily, but from what I've been told, you definitely don't want to do this, which I just took the slack of that wire out and strapped it to that 110. So they're saying that the 110 current will cause some kind of interference with the 12 volt DC current. So you might want to look into that. We're going to reroute and cross those at 90 degrees is what we've been told. So that's what we're planning to do with ours is keep them away from each other, probably relocate this farther away. But where it does have to cross, and we'll cross at 90 degrees to minimize that interference. Anyhow, one step forward, two steps back. It's a great learning process. <laughs> when we're all hooked up, we're going to sit back in the chair and go, Hey, baby, turn on the toaster. No, not going to have a toaster. Going to broil it in the gas oven. <laughs> so... I want to just say thanks to Bill for uh, putting in the comments my potential problem and he was actually kind enough to let me call him on the phone and tell me his personal experience with these problems so thank you Bill and I want to thank John my other friend that's an electrical engineer for his input and, and uh, confirming up what I need to do for me and Steve don't want to forget you brother thanks for your help I also, I really want to say thanks to everybody that's commenting on the videos. It's super awesome to not be doing this by ourselves. So I'm going to get through this. It's going to be totally awesome. It's just a little bit of a crooked road right now. <laughs> so I hope you guys uh, get all the help you need and uh, figure these things out. Maybe this puts you onto something that might help you uh, avoid having to go back and change all your outlets out like I'm doing. Anyways, think about it. Get professional help. Lots of love in your life.